Hi, everyone. I'm Steve here with David Wright. Thanks for being here, David. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Steve. All right, David. So um, you're a certified trainer. You're a trainer at uh, Fitness for 10 in Carson City. Tell us a little bit about your nutrition background. So um, I'm a certified nutrition coach through uh, NASM. And so um, a lot of the nutrition information, which that's a great program to go through, it gives a lot of great in-depth information on nutrition and, and, you know, what it should look like, but also with my own background and being a, a, a bodybuilding competitor and, and just being in the fitness industry for about nine years, um, I've learned a lot over the years in terms of um, what what things are good to eat to build muscle and are healthy in general, and of course the things that are not so good to, to eat or to add to our foods that otherwise might be uh, perfectly healthy. So um, there's a lot of learning experience that I've had, you know, real life experience in seeing what different foods do to your body, you know, a whole different video on kind of how that came to be. But, uh, you know, going from 260 pounds down to where I am now and with the different muscle mass, a lot of that has to do with changing those eating habits and the types of foods that you are eating and ingesting. Yeah. So we're going to talk about ultra processed foods. What, you know, we're going to talk about what they are. A little bit of my background. I started off as a personal trainer back in the late 80s and early 90s and had held every certification at the time. I've let them expire now. I'm a businessman. But my approach with this is I'll eat certain things or take certain supplements and I'll get my blood work done. So I'm always experimenting on myself. I'm not a doctor, but I do a lot of research on this stuff. We're going to talk about processed foods. So I'm relating everything that I say about ultra processed foods to me, to checking my blood pressure, checking my triglycerides, eating certain things. Now, I'm not going to say I go eat processed foods. I don't do that. But uh, because I, I don't need to know what processed foods do. I already know. So I'm not going to experiment you know, eating processed foods on myself uh, because with what I know and what I've learned and what I've researched, that would be stupid. Um, and I know it's not going to be good, especially over a period of time. You know, you hear statistics like one out of five um, teenagers have fatty liver. Mm -hmm. Well, most teenagers didn't start drinking when they were four, you know, right. to get to be 16 and have a fatty liver. It's the garbage food that they're being fed from an early age. So um, we're going to talk about processed foods and processed foods are everywhere in the standard American diet. Sad. And they're in packages. You buy a box of crackers, you buy a box of cereal. Oh, it's good for you. No, it's not. Um, packaged cookies. I mean, almost anything that's in the middle of the store. Packaged protein bars, right? <laughs> so, oh yeah. You know, it's just junk is everywhere and it's making us unhealthy. Um, I was listening to a a video on from a doctor um, just uh, this morning, as, as a matter of fact, and he's talking about high blood pressure. Well, processed foods, seed oils, seed oils are in the processed food, leads to insulin resistance, which leads to high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Yep. Get rid of the ultra processed foods can fix. And again, I'm not doctor. We're not doctors. We're giving you our opinion and our life experience and our research. So um, you get rid of the ultra processed foods, the seed oils, the vegetable oils mm -hmm. can help fix um, the insulin resistance which will help fix the high blood pressure. So your first thoughts, David, about uh, seed oils and ultra processed foods. 
Yeah, I mean, that is so unbelievably, unbelievably, excuse me, it's Monday, so can't speak today, but it's so holiday too. True. exactly, my, my vocabulary is out the window, but um, yeah, I mean, ultra processed foods, and, and I understand that people, you know, sometimes they're cheaper, a lot of times, to be honest with you, they're not, in the long run, they're definitely not cheaper, health concerns, etc. but, you know, we'll reach for that box of crackers, because that's a great example of marketing to people um you know this this picture of you know nature and you know wheat and whatever and it's whole grain whole wheat all these other things people go yeah that's great that's what i'm gonna buy the problem is um to kind of your point with all these packaged box different things in the store you know just look at what the actual ingredients are now number one we know that it's in a box so we know that it's been processed in some warehouse right but looking at all those different ingredients you'd be surprised I'm not really surprised, and I know that you're not, Steve, but a lot of people will be surprised if they really look at, at what's in that whole grain, whole wheat, super healthy for you, so the company says, cracker, right? Um, you know, and that's just a small example. There's sometimes, you know, 50 ingredients in these crackers that are supposed to be this great thing that you're, you're trying to do the right thing. You're trying to, you know, uh, I'm going to have this cracker instead of this cracker because this one's whole wheat. Well, you look at them and you go, well, not only are the nutrition labels, people are getting more used to reading, you know, the nutrition label because it's there, but they don't always read the ingredients. You look at the ingredients and nine times out of 10, or maybe even 9.9 .9 times out of 10, they're pretty much the same thing, except for one happens to look like it's wheat and one looks like it's bleached. Big deal. They're still the same cracker. So that's one of those things that just, even in that small example, um, you know, that's going to be extremely unhealthy, especially when we think they are healthy foods and we're consuming more quantities of it, that's that's all of those chemicals, seed oils, very specifically, once again, anytime I see vegetable oil, basically run the other direction. Um, it's unbelievably bad for you. Um, and for so many reasons, but you know, that's one of those things where you really have to look at ingredients, you really have to know what's in things. And you have to understand when things say and you and I talked about this the other day, Steve, natural flavors, natural, yep. That could be all sorts of things. It's like a, a mask to, to not have to actually tell you what those flavors are and what they're, where they came from. They can just, by law, call it a natural flavor because it came from somewhere. Doesn't mean it's good for you. We look at natural and we think good for me from nature. Not exactly. Um, so there's a lot of things going on there. So you really have to look at when you're making things at home, you know, from ingredients where you go, okay, I've got these five things that I'm making this dish or the snack or this, whatever it is, you know what's in it because you're putting the stuff there. Whereas when you buy it, you have no idea on some of those ingredients. Maybe you're reading them going, what on earth is this that's in this cookie, this cracker, this salad dressing, whatever it is. There, there are so many things that are added and you're just going, well, I see this in a lot of stuff, so it must be okay. No, it's probably a cheap filler ingredient to make it taste a certain way. So that you want to buy more of it or, you know, so it tastes a certain way because that's, again, marketing. That's what that's what these companies do is they market to you for a very specific reason, a specific type of food to make you think a certain way. So you'll buy it. That doesn't mean it's good for you to have your best interests in mind. So it's really important to look at those ingredients and know what you're looking at. It doesn't mean you have to spend hours and hours on the computer, but just understand. I mean, look at what you have in your house today and just say, OK, I'm going to take one thing and I'm just going to look at. What do I not know what this particular item is? Go look at that and see what it is. Start that type of stuff and just kind of understand, educate yourself in, you know, even the basics of understanding what you're, what you're buying so you can make the best choices. You know, I'm glad you mentioned, because I was bringing it up, I was going to bring it up and I will bring it up, natural flavors. Uh, run. <laughs> far, uh, far. Put it back on the shelf. Natural flavors. Yeah, that's uh, not anything you want to eat. Um, you, you know, rocks are natural, but I'm not going to eat rocks. Do you eat rocks, David? No, that's not not that I checked last. You know, that's not in my meal plan. <laughs> yeah, but the, but they're natural. You know, right? Um, so yeah, those are are tricky little things, and that's why you if you want to improve your health, and I think. Most people will be amazed. Everyone's unique. Everyone's different.
but most people will be amazed if you just switch to whole foods. Eat one ingredient foods. One ingredient, two ingredients maybe, is on the label. And when you do that, it's going to change your health. And on top of that, then try to eat organic. But then you now we're getting into the economics of this because now it's hard. It's hard. You know, I don't want to go on this rabbit trail, but a lot of people, maybe most people, can't afford to eat the way that I'm saying is best. Uh, so it's hard, you know, but the best you can do, if you can just do the best you can, trying to eat one ingredient foods, an apple, how many ingredients are in an apple? One. You know, how ground beef, it, it, that's whole food. You know, right. grass-fed, grass-finished is by far the best. Um, but that's the way you avoid processed foods and ultra-processed foods. Um, and there is a distinction between processed foods because a lot of things are processed to get it to where you can buy it and get it on the table. But um, the things in a package are ultra-processed. Any last thoughts, David? Yeah, I just think that, you know, one of the other things that I, I think of with the process, well, ultra process specifically, too, is that, you know, anything that's sitting on a store shelf and you look at that expiration date and it's got three, five, six months left on it, run the other direction. Because it's definitely an indicator, too, not even reading the ingredients, to know that there's a crazy amount of something you don't want in your body in there to keep that particular item uh, fresh or not, you know, not rotting, not fading away in the, in the, on the shelf there. So to extend that shelf life. So again, that's another one of those indicators. So there's red flags everywhere. Just really know, know where to look for them and, and do that research. And, you know, that would be super helpful for anybody who's trying to make the best decisions. Yeah, no, that last tip is a great one. And if you're going to be lazy and you don't want to read all the things on the label and then go research the 10 things that are on that label, just look at the expiration date, turn your brain on and ask yourself, why does this have another nine months before it has to be removed? And you could still probably chew it up and swallow it after two years. Oh, so yeah. that, you know, I, I love that last tip. We'll, we'll call that the, the lazy person's way of, um, um, checking the ingredients or the, or, or the, the health value of the food that you have in your hand, you know, if it's, and who knows how long it's been on the shelf. So exactly. Yeah. Well, tip. yeah. I mean, you don't know how long it's been on the shelf and then before that in a warehouse and before that in a truck, I mean, all the different logistics of just getting it to where you can touch that box package, whatever it is. So it's been there for a while. And then for it to last from when you see it, another however many months down the road it's like wow like i need to go as far away from this as i possibly can for sure it's not how food is supposed to be so david if people want to follow you on um social media want to see what you're doing with your competitions and all that stuff how do they follow you so they can follow me on instagram steve at david Wright underscore fitness that's for my my personal progress my show progress and show prep that's going on and uh, at Right Fitness Training for my personal training page. Thanks, David. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Steve.